Look at this. Fifth person to embrace Islam, Abu Dhar. The entirety of the Meccan period, there is no sign of Abu Dhar. 13 years, no sign of Abu Dhar. Hijrah, no sign of Abu Dhar. Badr, no sign of Abu Dhar. Uhud, no sign of Abu Dhar. Khandak, fifth year of Hijrah. Khandak, no sign of Abu Dhar al Ghifari. And then one day, the people of Makkah hear this huge rush of horses and camels coming towards Medina. And they rush out because they think there's an army about to attack Medina. And who is it? Abu Dhar. But not just Abu Dhar. The entirety of Bani al Ghifar embraced Islam. And he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, his, the Ghifar, every single one of the Ghifar. And the Prophet said, Ghafar Allah lahum. May Allah forgive the entirety of Ghifar. Today, inshallah, I want to focus and speak upon or regarding a very eminent Sahabi, radiallahu anhu, and his name was Jundub al-Junada. He's been better known as Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if anybody wants to see the abstinence from the dunya of Isa alayhi salatu salam, then he should look at Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu. Even in his days of Jahiliya, Abu Dhar never worshipped idols. He had this dislike for the worship of idols. He was always seeking the truth. So when he heard about that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had come, he sent his brother Anis to go to Makkah and check this person out. So his brother, he goes to Mecca. He stays in Mecca for a few days. He's watching the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he goes back to Abu Dhar and Abu Dhar said, what did you find? He said, I found a man who recites this beautiful kalam and I don't think it's poetry. And I also saw that he teaches some very good things, good characteristics. But this wasn't enough for Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu. He wanted to know more. So then Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu goes to Mecca. His brother told him, they know this man as Sabi. Sabi means a person who has left the religion of his forefathers. So he goes and he goes to the Kaaba and he asks somebody, he said, where is this man you called Sabi? So this man, now obviously they dislike the Prophet Sallallahu and they disliked anybody coming to ask about him and anybody interested in his da'wah. So what they do is that they beat Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu. So now Abu Dhar is very careful. So he stays around the Kaaba, waiting to see the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Ali sees this man, and Ali was a young boy at the time. So Ali radiallahu anhu says to him, do you have a place to stay? He says, no. He said, let me take you to my father's house. So he takes him to his father's house, Abu Talib's house, and he stays in the house of Abu Talib. Next day, he's again by the Kaaba. Ali radiallahu takes him again to his house. Third day, again by the Kaaba. On the fourth day, Ali radiallahu sees him again and he says, look, is there something specific you're looking for? Now the Muslims are always looking to give dawah anyway. He said, yes, but this is between me and you, don't tell anybody. I'm looking for the man they call Sabi. So he said, follow me and stay at a distance. Don't come too close. And wherever you see me stop, you stop. So he follows him and he takes him to the house Darul Arqam. Darul Arqam was the first madarsa, you could say, in the history of Islam. It was by the foot of the mountain of Safa. And there he meets the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
And the Prophet Sallallahu gave him da'wah and he embraced Islam. And then the Messenger of Allah said, which tribe are you from? He said, Al-Ghifar. And the Messenger of Allah said, Al-Ghifar? Why? Because the Al-Ghifar were known to be bandits. You know, they were known to, they, they, they resided somewhere between Mecca and Medina. And any caravan which went past them, they would try to rob it. So the Messenger of Allah said, Al-Ghifar? He said, yes. And then the Messenger of Allah said, Allah guides whoever He wishes. And this is the deep thing about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we have those who have the worst of characteristics once upon a time, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them, and they become the best of people. Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab. They would say regarding Umar, there's more chance of his father's donkey embracing Islam than this man embracing Islam. Arch enemy of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar, <laughs> la ilaha illallah, didn't only embrace Islam, he becomes a mere al-mu'mineen. Look at Khalid bin Walid. From the enemy of Allah, he becomes the sword of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Abu Dhar says to the Messenger of Allah, he says, Messenger of Allah, give me permission to give da'wah. So the Prophet sallallahu was cautious because the Muslims were only a handful. Actually, according to some narrations, that Abu Dhar was the fifth person to embrace Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ reluctantly allows him. So he stands by the Kaaba. He says, oh people of Mecca, people of Quraysh, come to me, listen to my qawl. So they gather around him and then he gives them da'wah towards Islam. They began to beat him until the Prophet ﷺ's uncle Abbas came. He wasn't a Muslim at that time. And he stopped them. He belongs to the tribe of Ghifar. He said, at the best of times, it's difficult to get past Ghifar. When your caravan goes to Syria, you think the Ghifar are going to allow you to pass without robbing your caravan? So Abu Dhar then goes, he's beaten. Next morning, he's back again. According to many historians, the first person to give open da'wah is Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu. Again, they beat him. And again, Abbas radiallahu anhu comes and he intervenes so then the message of Allah called him and he said Abu Dhar go to your people and call them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the entirety of Bani al Ghifar embraced Islam and he said not only that the message of Allah you see on the other side this is the Bani Aslam huge tribe the entirety of the Bani Aslam embraced Islam and the Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah keep the Bani Aslam intact. Look at this, SubhanAllah, disappeared for years. Came back with the entire tribe embraced Islam. Shortly after this, we had the Battle of Tabuk. The Battle of Tabuk, to give you a background, was where the Muslims were going to encounter the Christians in north. The Byzantines and the Arab Christians. It was midsummer. The Muslims just had a famine. It was time to now harvest the crops. And the Prophet says to the Sahaba, we're going 600 kilometers plus. Forget the famine, forget the harvest. So many of the Munafiqeen would come to the Prophet and they would say, Oh, Messenger of Allah, you know, we got this excuse and we got this excuse. And the Prophet Sallallahu would leave them. So then when they left, many of the Manafiqeen, when the whilst they are traveling, they find it too hot. So every night, some of them would slip away. They said, this is too tough for us. So the Prophet Sallallahu in the morning would be told, so and so is left. O Messenger of Allah, so and so is left. So and so is left. The Prophet Sallallahu said, if there's khair in him, he will join us. And then one morning they say, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Abu Dhar is gone. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, If there's khair in Abu Dhar, he will join us. So they'd leave. After a day or two, the Muslims are camped and in the distance they see a man walking. And he's walking and he's falling to one side and he's falling to the other side. And the Prophet Sallallahu looks and he said, Kun Abu Dhar. He said, Oh Allah, allow it to be Abu Dhar. 
and he comes closer and closer and the Messenger of Allah recognizes him. It's Abu Dhar. And the Prophet ﷺ then on that occasion he said regarding Abu Dhar, he said, Abu Dhar, in this dunya he walks by himself. The man will die by himself. And then a day will come, he will be resurrected on the day of judgment all by himself. Abu Dhar was very beloved to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was passing away, he took the hand of Abu Dhar and he placed it on his chest. The Prophet ﷺ gave Abu Dhar some amazing nasihas. And I'm going to go through some of the nasihas that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ gave. Seven nasihas he gave to Abu Dhar. He told me, love the poor people and remain in their company. Abu Dhar, wallahi, out of all the Sahaba, was the champion of the Masaki. And the Messenger of Allah told me to look at those who are below me and never look at those who are above me. In dunya. Because as long as you look at those who are below you, you will be in a state and in, in a state of contentment. And as long as you look at those who are above you, because there will always be people who will have more dunya than you, you will never be content. Look at those who don't have anything. We're always looking at those who are above us and we respect those who are above us, those who got more money than us, a bigger house than us. And we never have compassion for those who are beneath us. If Allah has given you wealth, may Allah give you more. Abdurrahman ibn Auf left $21 million when he left this dunya. But the thing is that there should be a compassion in the heart for those who have less for you than you. And you should never be looking up to people who have more than you. Wallahi, one of the most detestable people are those people who suck up to other people because they have more wealth than them or they have more status than them. I'll tell you why it's despicable. Because it's a reflection of your own sick self. That you will respect people because they got money. That they got status. The Messenger of Allah told Abu Dhar seven things. He said, do not, do not look at the ones who are above you. But look at those who are beneath you. And then he said to Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu. He said, Messenger of Allah told me to reconcile ties. This is beautiful. Even if your family members turn away from you. It's easy to be good to people who are good to you. But it's more difficult that family member who shuns you, that family member who doesn't give you time, who never rings you, you pick up the phone and you ring that person and say, how are you? To attain Jannah is not cheap. Those family members who don't give you the time, when you go to Bangladesh, Somalia, Pakistan, and you go to visit all your rich relatives, but you never go to visit those relatives who have nothing. And you know what I'm speaking about. Because they got no status in society. Because by your criteria, is wealth is every, everything. The Messenger of Allah said, reconcile ties even if they turn away from you. In another narration, the Prophet wasallam said, Allah elongates the life of that person who reconciles ties. And then he says that the Messenger of Allah told me, don't ask anybody for anything. And he commanded me, listen Abu Dhar, speak the truth even if people find it bitter. No Allah, there was anyone amongst the Sahaba who spoke the truth. Everybody disagreed with Abu Dhar on certain things. But he spoke the truth even if people disliked. He confronted Muawiyah, he confronted Uthman anhum, and he spoke what he believed to be the truth, even if those people found it bitter. And the Messenger of Allah said to me, Oh Abu Dhar, listen, do not fear what people will say about you. La ilaha illa. So speak the truth and never give a damn about what people will say about you. How many things in your life you would have wanted to do but you didn't do because you were too worried about what people would say. And if death was to befall you tomorrow, wallah, you would, you would think to yourself, you know, I wish I'd done this 
and I wish I'd done this, but then it's too late. Don't care about people, you know why? Because people are never pleased. Because people need to put you down to feel good about themselves. For their own reassurance, they have to live off your failures. Do not allow what people say to stop you from doing what is good. And then the last thing he says that the Messenger of Allah commanded me that I recite La Hawla wa La Quwwata illa Billah profusely because it's a treasure under the arch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu went for Hajj. People came around, he's the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they surrounded him and they asked Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, they said, they said oh, Abu Dhar give us some advices. So Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu gave him some advices and the first thing he said, make a pilgrimage to Mecca for your dire needs. Go there and make the dua from the inner. And this is a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not turn you away. He said, fast in the hottest days in contemplation of the horrific day when you will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, pray two rakats in the darkness of the night. Turn off the lights when it is very dark. Pray two rakats and imagine that you are in your grave. The only thing which will illuminate that grave is our actions. This dunya is for two things, either for the hereafter or either to seek that which is permissible for you. He said, look to your money and divide it into two categories. One dirham you spend on your family and the second dirham you give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, if you have a third dirham, there's no good in it. And this was Abu Dharr. The message of Allah said, if you want to see the abstinence of Isa alayhi salatu salam amongst this ummah, then look at Abu Dharr. And this was Abu Dharr radiallahu anhu's fiqh on this issue. So when Islam began to spread and, it's, and the riches of the other countries came to the Muslims, Abu Dharr was in Damascus. So Damascus was the outpost. So Makkah and Medina actually became very small compared to the outpost because they grew, everybody went there, all the wealth came to those places. So he's there. So the governor of Damascus is Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. So now Abu Dhar, because that's his opinion, you can't keep anything extra. He would go around and especially to all the leaders, he would say, look, this big house, given the path of Allah. This extra money you got, given the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until him and Muawiyah radiallahu anhu had a debate. You know, he, he would pull them up and he would say, that which you have extra, you need to give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his, in his opinion, where did he get it from? See, this verse, which I'm going to read now, for the vast majority of the scholars, they say it's regarding zakat. But Abu Dhar said, no, no, it's not regarding zakat, it's regarding any penny that you have access, you have extra, you need to give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, inna kathira min al-ahbari wal-ruhmani layakuluna amwala nasi bil-baatil wa yasudduna an sabilillah wal-ladheena yaknidhuna dhahaba wal-fiddhata وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِأَذَابٍ Allah says in the Quran, Oh you believe, indeed many of the ahbar, the preachers, the priests, and, and this can encompass the Jewish and the Christian, والرحمن, and the monks, they eat the wealth of the people بالباطل, in falsehood. And they stop people from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those who hoard gold and silver, and do not spend it in the path of Allah. Give them glad tidings that Allah will punish them on the day of judgment. Now, according to the vast majority of the Mufassireen, the Muhaddithin, the Ulama, this is regarding zakat. But Abu Dhar said, no, 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 no. 
This is regarding any penny you have extra. You need to give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he read this verse to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, Muawiyah said, oh no, no, you misunderstood this. Allah here is saying, inna kathiran min al-ahbari wa rahman. Allah is not speaking about the Muslims. Allah is speaking about the Jews and the Christians and the monks, etc. Not about the Muslims. Abu Dhar said, yes, the verse speaks about the Ahbar and the Rahman. But how does Allah start it? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu inna kathira min al-ahbari wa rahman. O you who believe many of the Ahbar and the Rahman do this. So although he's informing you about the Jews and the Christians, but in reality, Allah is speaking to the believers. So these debates took place between him, Muawiyah, and the others until Muawiyah got tired. Now this is in the time of Uthman radiallahu. So he sent a letter to Uthman who was in Medina, and he said, look, you know, Abu Dhar is giving us a difficult time. So Uthman wrote a letter back to Muawiyah, he said, send him to Medina, but make sure you honor him because he is a great companion of the message of Allah and he was beloved to the message of Allah. So he comes to Medina and him and Uthman have a discussion. Him and Uthman, obviously he had a great immense of respect for Uthman anhu. he loved Uthman anhu. So Uthman anhu speaks to him and he says, okay, I will listen but I will not stay in Medina. If you want me to remain quiet, I cannot stay in Medina. He said, why? He said, because the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi said, Oh, Abu Dhar, when you see people building on the mountain of Sil'a, and it's the mountain where around, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi on the battle of Khandak, he, play, he kept his tent. So he said, when you see people building on the mountain of Sil'a, then leave Medina. He said, buildings are already erected there. So I will not stay in Medina, I will go out. So he went to a place called Rabada. Rabada is about 16 miles outside Medina. And Abu Dhar's house in Rabada was subhanAllah very simple. So one person came to Abu Dhar and he saw his house and he said, he said, Abu Dhar, where, where's all your goods? You know, where's all your furniture? It's very simple. He said, I have another house. He said, and all my possessions I've sent forward. He said, where's that house? He said, that house is in the Akhirah. And he said, you know, the owner of this house is not going to allow me to stay here for very long, but the owner of that house will allow me to stay there for eternity. And you know, Allah he brought me back to the hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam when Umar ibn Khattab, he came into the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he looked around and there's hardly anything there. There's a few water skins. And Umar looks around and Umar tears up. And the message of Allah said, Umar, what's wrong? And the Prophet and Umar radiallahu anhu said, Oh, message of Allah, look at the Kisra and the Kaisra, the leader of the Romans and the Persians, look at the lavish nature in which they live in. Oh, message of Allah, you are the beloved of Allah. And look what you have. La ilaha illallah. The Prophet sallallahu was sitting down and he sat up. And the mat that he was lying on was so rough that it left an imprint on the side of the message of Allah. And he said, oh, Ibn al-Khattab, oh, Umar, even you don't understand. My example is like a traveler who rests under a tree for a little while, and then he moves on to his eternal abode. And when I read this narration of Abu Dhar, and I thought, subhanAllah, the Sahaba were generally people who lived a life of abstinence, but Abu Dhar was on a different level. Abu Dhar was the same Sahabi, who called Bilal, Yabn Sauda. So Bilal radiallahu anhu got offended and he went to the Messenger of Allah and he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, this man, Arab, thinks he's better than I am. And he insults me through my mother. And the Messenger of Allah didn't say, Oh Abu Dhar, the man who the entirety of the Ghifar embraced Islam. 
the entirety of the Bani Aslam, the, one of the leaders of his tribe, the Messenger of Allah, summoned him. And he said, Oh Abu Dhar, you know that trait of yours, it has nothing to do with Islam, it's Jahiliya trait. And what was Abu Dhar like, subhanAllah? Everybody makes mistakes. But the man is he who realizes he's made a mistake. And Abu Dhar radiallahu went out and he lied down on the floor and he said, I will not stand up from here until Bilal comes and places his foot on my chest. Meaning he insults me, he degrades me. And when Bilal radiallahu anhu came, Bilal forced him up with his hands. And this had an everlasting effect on Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu. Abu Dhar lived his life in Rabada. When Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu was passing away, his wife said, oh, she said, oh my husband, I don't have enough kafan to bury you. What am I going to do when you die? It's only his wife, that's all. Nobody else with him. He said, don't worry, Allah will provide. And Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu passes away. And his wife is now looking for somebody to dig the grave, some men to dig the grave, to bury her husband. The corpse is lying. She doesn't have enough kafan. So she's running around looking for somebody. So she's running around and then she sees a group of men. And they're riding towards Kufa from Medina. And she says to them, would you like to perform the janazah of a companion of the Messenger of Allah? The leader of these group of people was Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, of course. She said, who is it? She said, Abu Dhar. And the narrations mentioned that he began to cry uncontrollably. And then after a while, when he stopped crying, he began to smile. And they asked him, why are you smiling for? He said, because I heard the message of Allah say, Abu Dhar, a group of Muslims will pray your janazah. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu led the janazah. And he stood on the janazah and then he began to cry. And he said, indeed what the message of Allah said was truth. Ya Abu Dhar, I heard the message of Allah say, Abu Dhar, in this world you will walk alone. Abu Dhar, you will die alone. And on the day of judgment, Allah will resurrect you all by yourself.